podium. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. May I present several aspects of immunotherapy of melanoma and contemporary successes that we managed to obtain over the last year. I'm not going to focus on the markers. This is something that we have already discussed on this slide. You can see all the uh, complications and all the targets for this therapy. The key task is to fine tune the uh, host body to fight, to attack the tumor and not to subvert to it. And this is what we must keep in mind when we want to generate an anti-tumor result out of all, uh, a wide spectrum of anti-tumor results. In Russia, only one has been registered. This is Epilimumab. It was registered on the 5th of May. It is not commercially available to our patients yet, but Oh, we are having homework done, and we are fully recognize that other um, other medications can pr prove to be ever more efficient than ipilimumab. So I'm going to briefly focus on the information that we have about ipilimumab, because this is something that is really um, something that can be already now practically applied. So what I would like to note is that we have huge uh, background. We have good data on seven years survival that was presented last year and in patients with disseminated melanoma who were treated in the set, not in the first line with ipilimumab. And also, please, uh, as for nine uh, years of availability, the percent is uh, not dramatically lower, which means that we can hope for long-term survival of patients with disseminated melanoma. This is a huge success, success for ipilimumab. Uh, we compare ipilimumab with chemotherapy so as to demonstrate its efficiency. Chemotherapy is the golden standard in Russia still. 70% of seven-year survival is a very remarkable value uh, opposite to chemotherapy. There are several cases that show that this medication can be efficient in various scenarios. I'm not going to focus on biomarkers because we all this is something that we have already covered today, but there are some negative uh, predictive factors for this medication. But despite these factors, survival can be long-term indeed. And this is the analysis of our own data on 150 patients who were exposed to ipilimumab treatment. Ipilimumab is the uh, first uh, medication that was registered to treat disseminated melanoma in Russia. This discloses new horizons, uh, especially in patients with the fourth stage. Look at the uh, black graph, the black curve. This is survival in patients with, dis with disseminated melanoma. We use this data to, uh, to separate patients into groups. Ipilimumab in patients with disseminated melanoma increases survival by several percent, and we see that the survival curve flattens over quite sustainable time. So this is a success. Well, again, anti 
PD-1, NTPD, L-1 uh, medications act but inside the tumor and can get involved, interfere into the anti-tumor uh, responses by generating better results. There are two medications registered for to treat disseminated melanoma. Those are pembrolizumab and nivolumab in Russia. Both medications are not registered, so what we must keep in mind is the fact that these medications are not registered, and we are discussing them now. A keynote 001, this is the research for melanoma cohorts. The results were so shocking and exciting that the non-randomized analysis results were of high value. Another research in 2015, the waterfall, that uh, demonstrates uh, the decrease of tumor nodes. So th this is second line treatment. Some of the patients were exposed to ipilimumab, some of them not. Some of those who were exposed to ipilimumab are demonstrated in bright green. But in both cohorts, the, uh, the effect is positive. A long-term response, therapeutic response, is also positive. We have a 24 months uh, term, and the, um, the long-term response was registered in 70% uh, 70, 70 of patients which is highly indicative. This is the therapy uh, response frequency. Uh, we have 33% response, therapeutic response. And the, the objective, the average, response can be not as high as in RAF inhibitors, but it is anyway there in patients to, with, together with positive uh, forecasts. In patients with low tumor load, this can yield ever better effect. The general survival in total population this is the data for 2015, and we have updated data for 2016. What is important is the fact that as of 2015, 21% are, are under treatment, but only 40% of them rejected treatment. With the average uh, the average term of treatment is six months. Here we have data for survivability without progression, 2015. Despite the median five months, and with BRAF inhibitors, this is ever more, we have what we have is a flattened graph without any progression both for, gen for total survival. The uh, survival median without progression is not the value that we must evaluate in patients that are on immuno-oncological treatment. This gives us very good understanding of how this treatment works. In first-line treatment, these results are even better, the, with the median survival standing at 32 months. This is a great result indeed. What happens to patients who d 
discarded from treatment. But the treatment does not have uh, the final determination term for NTPDL1 uh, medications. We must go on with treatment until progression or until intolerance. But this is the data of the analysis of a very recent analysis that says that at a temporary positive effect within not within the, f the first three months, but later after the, there is a positive response, what happens? So the blue dots indicate the time when patients had a positive response to treatment. Every line corresponds to one patient. So we have the, on the graph, you, you can also see the dose. And after the positive effect, there is some significant time without any progression, which is a very good, which is very good indication for us. And even patients who stopped treatment have demonstrated some prog positive progression. Pembrolizumab versus ipilimumab. One and the same dose. Again, latest data. What happens? In pembrolizumab group, the total survival and the total survival without progression is better. And this is more recent data for patients. 70% of patients go on with pembrolizumab. All patients uh, were exposed to ipilimumab. However, tolerance and toxicity also are also in favor of NTPDL1 therapy. Again, progression, a progression free survival. Uh, keynote 006, total survival. Pembrolizumab does better. Again, fresh data and the same thing. Very briefly on side effects. Well, I'm aware of the time limit. And one more, just a couple of words on NTPDOA1 nivolumab. This is a combination of two uh, drugs. A combination is possible, but it triggers, it has some comorbidity. And this combination demonstrates better results. And in patients with low PDL adenine expression, this can be indeed uh, significant. Positive response can be generated in patients with low PDL1 in combination of two medications. The same story is for pembrolizumab. And a couple of words on these consecutive therapies. We have two types of medications. What should be prescribed first if we have a choice. There is relevant data. Both in the first and in the second line, we can obtain a better result. And just very briefly on, follow, on the follow-up research that have generated primary results. The first results were obtained in combination with NIPID-IDO that demonstrates 90% response in patients with metastatic melanoma of the first and second stages. And now the third stage is being underway. Pembro with virus, a combination. The first stage is passed, and we also see a high response frequency. Uh, so uh, this table summarizes the responses to treatment in first line. 
So what's important is the long-term response that is better than in target therapy. Thank you for your attention.